I think it actually had been in the pipeline for a while. I actually recorded a whole bunch of stuff in 2019 that actually sort of does make its way into the album in various places, but sort of quite often it's been like reworked and processed and reinvented, which is actually quite a way that I quite like to work, which is to sort of start out by writing quite traditional pieces, like sit at the piano and write and score it all out and record it all properly, you know, like a piece of music. At that point, then when I have the recordings, I kind of feel like that's when I want to reinvent them into something else. So I was doing, like I was writing a whole bunch of stuff in 2019, like between projects and going in and recording stuff with a string ensemble and like a violinist. And I was like, cool, this is going to be like a nice piano and strings album. And I kind of like put it to one side. It got really busy at the end of 2019. Uh, I moved into this studio, which is kind of intentional uh, to be able to like get a nice piano and some gear and be able to record people in here. That was the 1st of March 2020. There was some talk of like a pandemic going on at that point. But then two weeks later, I found myself having to pack up a small bag with my laptop and get in an Uber. So I found myself at home, like with just these recordings that I'd made in 2019. And I sort of just had this energy to just sort of delve back into them and see what was there and figure out like what I could make from them. And also at that point I was thinking, oh, it'd be quite a good opportunity to like learn Ableton Live at the same time, which is another bit of software to what I'm usually using Logic, but it's kind of like a different way of working Ableton. So I was like, cool, I'll start like pulling some of these sounds and textures, pull them into Ableton and start sort of like playing around and seeing what I can make to learn the software. And I guess over the course of like a couple of weeks, I started to find that there were like these textures that were starting to come out that I just really kind of resonated with and felt new and different to what I'd been doing before. And they were all kind of derived from these pieces that I'd written. So, but they were sort of warped, which kind of became like a totally new launching point for um, how to write an album. It's kind of unlike any way that I'd done it before. Then because 2020 was so quiet, I did just have all this time to work on it. and sort of before long, I was realizing that it was sort of starting to take a bit of a shape. I spent a lot of time thinking like, what, you know, what is it that I'm making? And I kind of kept returning to this feeling of imagination that you have as a child and um, that I always kind of feel like I've slightly lost touch with as an adult. Or I feel like I understand the world sufficiently now that I don't have the sort of freedom of imagination that you have as a child where kind of anything can be possible. And that's kind of scary. I, I feel like I kind of know, broadly speaking, how the world functions now. And I think that vision of the world is probably a lot more prosaic than my childhood version of that world. It's really just an effort to try and reconnect with that particular feeling that like there's a mystery to the world that still needs to be figured out. Mm. And I was grappling for a long time with what a title for it should be. And actually the title uh, Vivarium was something that came to me relatively early. I kind of kept coming back to that idea that somehow this sort of musical world that I felt like I was building, I want it to feel like you're sort of stepping into something which when you're inside it is a whole world in itself. And when you're inside it, you're unaware of the world outside. It, that just kind of kept coming back to me. And there was just something about the idea of a vivarium that seemed to resonate with that. You sort of can't see out of it into the real world beyond it. 